Hello and welcome to the Beginner's Tatting video series. Today we're going to work on floating rings. What a floating ring is, is a ring that comes off of a chain and it just sort of floats there. Now you'll get patterns that have several floating rings in it that you'll make. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do this technique. Now let me zoom in on this motif that I have done so you can see exactly what it is we're doing today. Okay, now what we have done is we've created a ring, a chain, a floating ring, a chain, and another ring and joined it to the first ring. So that's what I'm going to teach you to do today. This little element is what we're making. Today I'm using crochet cotton size 3 thread and my Tatsy shuttles. Let me zoom out so that you can see where we're at. Now, as I said, we have a ring, okay? We have a chain and we're ready to do our floating ring. Now, we made our ring, we reversed our work, we did our chain of five. The ring is three picots separated by three double stitches. Now, when you're making the floating ring, you're in the reversed position because you're working on your chain, okay? And you do not use shuttle one. There are two shuttles on this one. This, the clear one would be shuttle one, the blue one is shuttle two. Shuttle 1 is what you've made your ring with. Shuttle 2 is what you've made the chain with. Shuttle 2 is the one we're going to work with. So you don't need shuttle 1 right now. You need shuttle 2. And what you do is you set up your hand, your loom on your hand, to make a ring. Now let me zoom out here some so that you can see exactly what it is I'm doing. Now, let me show you. Here's the ring that we made with shuttle one, okay? That's this shuttle. Here's the chain that we started with shuttle two. It was wrapped in the chain position, okay? Now we took it off our finger, brought it up because now we're going to make a thrown ring. It's called a thrown ring, a floating ring, or just a throw off ring, okay? So, we're working with shuttle two. Now, with shuttle two, we've got our chain. We do not reverse our work after we've made our chain. We start right into our ring. Our ring is the same. Three picots separated by three double stitches. So, that's one, two, and three. Now we're going to get a pico in here. I'm not using a pico gauge today because we're just learning how to make a floating ring, thrown off ring, or thrown ring, whichever you want to call it. We're not working on our picos, so we don't need the gauge. Alright, we've got one pico. We're going to do our second pico. I'll try to get them as close as possible to the same size. I'm not a perfectionist on this or a professional. There are some people I just, I'm like, oh, if I didn't have to use my Pico gauge, I'd be in seventh heaven. But uniformity is the key. Okay, now we're working on our third Pico and our last three double stitches on this ring. Okay. sticky today. Okay, now we're going to close that ring. Alright, see it? That's our floating ring. This is our first ring. This is our floating ring. Thrown ring or thrown off ring. Now we're going to take this blue shuttle, wrap our hand for to make the last five double stitches in this chain. Okay, so now we pick up shuttle one and we make the last five double stitches in this chain. That's one, two, three, 
four and five. Now our chain is complete with our, our floating ring on the chain. Okay, now reverse our work and we're going to make the second ring and join it to our first ring. Okay, and this is three pico separated by three double stitches. So that's one, two, three. And we've got our three double stitches. Now we're going to join to this pico right here. Grab our thread, pull it up, make sure our loop is laying proper. We're going up because we're doing an up join. And we're going to pull it in tight and continue on with the ring. Okay, some more thread. Slipped off my fingers. Another pico. And then our third pico and our last three double stitches to finish this ring out. we have our joined pico, our second pico, and our third pico. So our ring is ready to close. Grab that shuttle and just pull and close that thread. Or close the ring. Alright, now let me get my scissors over here. We're going to cut this off so you can see what it looks like. There. You have the first ring and the first chain we started the video with. You have the throne ring. And then you have the second half of your chain. And then the joining ring. So there you have it. A throne ring, thrown off ring, or a floating ring. That's what it's called. They're done with your chain thread. The one that's wrapped around your finger commonly called shuttle two. So when you see a pattern that says shuttle two in it and you know it's a ring, you know it's going to be a throne ring. I've not seen throne rings off of a ring. Doesn't mean it can happen. All the ones I've seen are off of a chain. Okay, so that's what a throne ring looks like and it's very very simple. Just remember Shuttle one, shuttle two. Okay? Uh, some people will take a piece of masking tape, put it on their shuttle, and put one. Okay? And two. Uh, some people take a magic marker and put the number on the shuttle, which shuttle it is, so they can keep track of it. I myself use two different colored shuttles. So I know shuttle one's one color, shuttle two's the other color. Because with tape, it can make your shuttle sticky if it comes off. And it's hard to get that off, the sticky stuff. With the uh, marker, you can't get it off. So I just use two different colored shuttles so I can keep my shuttles apart. So that's your tidbit for today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is how you do a throne ring, and that's the lesson for today. The next video we're going to do is going to be the mock ring for shuttle tatters. Um, and then I'm going to do... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I've got allergies bad today. Um, I'm also going to do this throne ring technique in the needle tatting. So look for that. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. And happy tatting to you. And you have a great day. See you in the next class.